Hello friends and welcome to Woofboxing, the channel all about the Woofbox. I will be making a series of videos describing each of the sequencer pages. Today we're going to start with the pattern page. Let's go. So first, how do we get to the sequencer pages? Well, once you're in the sequencer, you can see it's a sequencer, you just turn right. And here we go. Pattern, global, oscillator 1, oscillator 2, amplitude, filter, those are envelope, pitch, pan, and dynamics and patch. And you can always click the encoder to go back to the sequencer. But today we are going to go to the pattern page. All right, so how does this work? Each key that is lit up contains a parameter and you change that parameter by holding it and then you can see what it is and then turning the encoder. So the first one is beat division. So if I go back to the sequencer and I put in trigs on every step, I get the speed, 16th notes. However, if I do half speed, now it's gonna be half speed. Very cool. What about quarter speed? All right. One thing that's interesting is to use values that are odd, like three or five. Moving on, the next one is Pattern length. Pattern length is really cool because you can do things like this. This is something I do very often to help come up with grooves. If I play this, it's gonna sound just like it did when I had 16 steps. Except now, if I wanna edit them, I only need to edit four. For example, let's have the first one be max velocity. That might be a little too much. You can already hear there's some kind of thing happening here. Let's take this one down to like. There you go. How about this one? And what if we take this one all the way down to. That might be a little too much. So as you can see now, I've built a little, a nice little groove. It's almost like a shaker. Another thing you can do is to use, for example, seven. Now this is going to make it so you don't have a repeating pattern. It's going to change pretty much every bar. Very cool. The next one, pattern chaining. So let's say that 16 pattern is not enough or you want to create some specific things. So Right now, you know what, let's make this, let's make this, uh, we're gonna go back to the pattern page. We're gonna make this four steps. And right now it says self. So that means that when this four step pattern is done playing, it's gonna play again. It's playing itself next. However, if we make a new pattern by going to pattern two, and let's just do, I have no idea. You know what, I'm too lazy to do this. Let's create one randomly. Perfect, going back to pattern one. Now, if I go to the pattern page and I say, hey, after this pattern, I want you to play pattern two. What's gonna happen? It's going to play this pattern and then it's gonna move to pattern two. Let's try it. Very cool, except that now it's stuck on this one. So what if we want to go back to the first one? Well, easy breezy, go back to the pattern page and on this one, we say, hey, you know what? Go to pattern one. And now, oh, hold on. We're gonna start at pattern one. Interesting. That first pattern, it's cool, but it's really short. So I could do the whole 16 step and input velocity for every step, but I don't wanna do that. Let's use pattern repeat. So let's go back and it is this one. So let's say I want this to repeat four times. Now this pattern is gonna play four times, then it's gonna to move to pattern two. Let's do it. Very cool. So as you imagine, there's so many things you can do with that. What's next? We have a very fun and kind of unique thing that I haven't seen on many groove boxes. These are mute length, unmute length, and mute offset. For mute length, let's go with, we're gonna do 
four quarter notes. We're going to unmute for one bar. All right. So now what's going to happen, this is still set to play four times, except the first of those four times, it's not going to play. So what's happening here? For the first four notes, the pattern's actually muted. It's playing, but it's muted, so you can't hear it. Then it unmutes itself for a one bar. Let's make it a little easier to see. So if I go to here and I'll make this one bar. So now this is going to play four times, but we're not gonna hear it because it's muted. And it will unmute when it moves to pattern two. Let's check it out. Very cool. You could do something like, hey, you know what? I want you to do half. So let's do, let's do that. And then for this one, we're gonna do seven and here we'll do four. So now it's gonna do some really odd things. Very cool. And again, it's gonna be different every bar. And using techniques like this, you can make generative music, which is super interesting. Right now, when we hit play, we don't hear anything because these four notes are muted. But what if we wanted to hear these because we wanted the muting to start after? Well, you can do that with the mute offset. Right now it's set to none. Let's set it to four. And that means that now it's going to play right away because it's offset by four beats. There you go. So it's the same as before except it's offset. So the next one is playthrough counter reset behavior, and it specifies how playthroughs should be counted for a conditional behavior. I haven't used that one too much, but you have three parameters, audible, always, and never. And last but not least is a follow chord override. I think this is actually the same control as is on, number on parameter four in the global page, except it's an override, so you can override the settings for that. So that brings us to the last thing, which is the pattern context menu. Let's go to the ARP track. We're going to navigate to the pattern menu. So I'm gonna hold right, click the encoder, and now I am in the pattern context menu. The first item is chain next. This is really useful if you just wanna chain the next pattern. So let's say I wanna expand on that. I can just go to the pattern menu, enter the context menu, and long press to select this. Now you'll notice that it will go to pattern two after pattern one is over. There you go. By the way, you switch pattern by holding play and pressing a track button. This was our first pattern. This is our second pattern. I'm just gonna do this. If I go back to pattern one, Very cool. Let's go back to pattern one and let's go back to the pattern menu. I can just get back into the context menu by holding right and clicking the encoder. And then you'll see that there is chain four. This is gonna do the same thing we just did except for four patterns. So I will demo that. Boom. So now if I hit play, two, three, four. See it changed. So now we have a 64 step pattern. I use this all the time. So now I'm going to live record something. I'm gonna hold right and press play. I am now in live record mode and here we go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I've just recorded a 64 step pattern. Going back to the context menu, you can do this for eight bars or for all 16 patterns. So this is really cool if you wanna make a really long pattern, I think that equals to 256 uh, steps or two or something like that. Math is not my strong suit. And the last item is the step length, which I just passed. There you go, step length. And this shows how long one step is on the current track. And that's gonna depend on the BPM and also the pattern division settings you have set on that track. And I just wanna show one more example of how to use the pattern chaining features and repeat to create some kind of fill. So let's keep things simple. I'm going to set down a kick pattern, just four on the floor over here. And that will be pattern one. And then for pattern two, I'm gonna do that. 
except at the end, I'm gonna do maybe this. Okay, let's, uh, let's link those. So I can just go to the pattern screen, get to the context menu, I'm gonna chain the next pattern. But let's say we want the first pattern to play three times. So we have three bars of the kick and then we have kind of our fill on the fourth bar. So we're gonna go to the pattern screen and we're gonna make this repeat three times using the repeat option. And now this should play three times and then we'll move to pattern two. Let's do it. Now, very cool. I'm sure you can see why this is a really, really useful feature. And that is it. That is the pattern mode. I'll be making a video like this for each of the sequencer pages. So if you don't want to miss one, make sure you subscribe and turn on the little bell icon. Thank you so much for being here and ciao, ciao.